welcome to part two of I have far too many shirt and top patterns for somebody that doesn't wear shirts or tops. Let's de-stash or let's have a look at the pretties that I can't get rid of because I love them. <laughs> <laughs> I have far too many patterns here. Actually, if you haven't seen it already, I have put out my top collection that I went through and organized into patterns that I was going to make and patterns that really did need to find a new home. Without more waffle, because we all know how good I am at that, let's get started. The first one is McCall's 6566, which is from the very lovely Monica, and it is a Easy McCall's Back to Basics. It's a little tie front shirt with low of different options. I really like this. I really like a tie front shirt. I really like that this one has like a revere notched collar or you can have it without that as well. D, beauty. Yeah, I really really like this one. I am going to keep this one and I'm going to keep it as is because I do like a tie front shirt, cropped tie front shirt, and that is the kind of shirt that I wear most frequently when I do wear one. Next we have Vogue 1845. This is epic absolutely epic and I know one of you lovely peeps has made this up already and you put it up on the peeps group and it looked amazing. I really want to try this. I really really want to try this. I think it's beautiful. I don't know if I'd ever wear it. I, I kind of want to give it a go for the challenge of giving it a go. I think if I made a few tweaks to it like elongated the front a little bit because it's cutting off in an area that I, I would want it just a little bit longer. I can see myself wearing it you know maybe every now and again I don't think it, I, it it's a very statement shirt so I don't think it's a staple shirt for anyone's anyone's wardrobe is it but oh, the challenge of making this one they do recommend broadcloth cotton shirting poplin I would imagine that's because of all the pleats and ease of actual making I probably would want it in something floatier but I could spray starch the something floatier the viscose and a viscose twill would have the float that I like but also has a bit of body and structure to it so I'm keeping this one it's a huge challenge I have no idea if I'd actually wear it if it would be a useful piece in my wardrobe but I really want to give it a go next we have Vogue 7305 which was a present from the very lovely Debbie. Now you guys know me really well. She saw that this had a cropped shirt on it. Cropped high front shirt. She was like, ooh, that reminds me of Sean. I shall buy it for her and send it to her. And it very much is up my alley. So thank you very much, Debbie. I am keeping this one and I will make this one up at some point. Next we have Vogue 9029, which I think is absolutely gorgeous. I love this shirt. I really like the UD. Is this the one that I've made? I think this is the one that I've made. <laughs> there are two shirts uh, by Vogue. I think I have made this one. I think I made it at the end of last year. I have given that shirt to mum. I just never reached for it ever. I don't really wear shirts unless they are cropped shirts. I, I love the ruffles on D though. I really do love the ruffles on D. I I think I'm gonna keep this one. I genuinely can't remember if it's this one or the other one that I made. I will try and put a picture up of the other one because I think I've actually ended up giving mum that pattern because I think mum's made this one. It is a gorgeous shirt. It really is a gorgeous shirt, but I just don't kind of wear shirts. She says when she has this many bands. I have issues. We know this. Okay, next we've got Vogue 9370 and this one is actually a shirt or a shirt dress, but I have it in my shirt collection because I would never wear the dress as is. I had a top that was very similar to this in the top collection clear out. It was a simplicity pattern. This one I think is absolutely gorgeous and again reminds me of the name of the company that I cannot think of. It very much reminds me of Oh, it's not, I want to keep saying paperclip or paper chase. It's not either of those things. I know it begins with a P. I will have put it on screen for you. It reminds me of their kind of thing. It's view A that I really, really like. I don't mind C, D. What's the difference? Oh, D is the belt. I don't mind C with the belt, but I, it would be, I would think I would want to make A first and then see how I felt about the fullness of it as to whether I would then make it an elongated one and make a 
belt to go over the top of it or just wear one of my belts over the top of it. Cotton shirting, crepe linen. Ah, crepe. See, now that I can get on board with because again, I would want this to have some floatiness because that would just, for me, work better for the way that I like my clothes to feel when I'm wearing them. This kind of thing, I would feel it would be too stiff and there'd be too much of it. For stiffer fabrics, like I'm wearing a cotton lawn today, which is not overly stiff, but the bodice is very fitted to my body rather than blousy. It does have some blousy parts in it because there's gathering here and also in the front darts, which I think is really interesting. This is the 5951. I've done a sew along for that. I'll lift that up here and in the description down below. And it also is one of those ones that doesn't take very much fabric, which I love. So some of my, what were supposed to be shirt lengths are back here waiting to be this dress. But I digress. Yeah, I for, for, for this kind of fullness over my body, I would prefer it to be floaty fabric. So I really love this one. I want to give this one a try. And it would be, ooh, throwing things on the floor. It would be interesting to make that one up and the simplicity one up and see which one I preferred because I don't think I need both patterns in my sash once I've tried them both. So yeah, that could be an interesting video. Maybe, maybe, maybe that'll be one something that I do next year. Anyway, McCall's 8040. I think this is absolutely gorgeous. I will never wear this as a shirt. I probably will never wear this as a dress either. They do have view A, which is a waist length shirt. So it does have a seam in there, which means that you could add on fairly easily a skirt or you could elongate the panel pieces of the other two styles longer and um, as long as you kind of took into account your high waist, uh, your high hip, your hip measurement, your butt measurement and made them big enough to skim over those, you could do like an A-line skirt from that. Honestly, thinking about this, as much as I love this shirt, I will never wear this and I wouldn't wear it as a dress either because I have other ones that I prefer over the top of this one. So this one is gonna go I'm really sad about it but it is gonna go we have McCall's 8181 I mean this one is very similar to the one that I have just got rid of it is a v-neck it this one does have the princess seam come up to kind of what would be the shoulder line and then this one previously has the princess seam go into the armhole so there is some differences but I do prefer this one. I really like the sleeves of B. It does already have the waist seam put in there that you can have for A and then B has a peplum on it so it would be a case of just elongating the peplum and having a play around with that but this one is going to stay. Out of the two I think that's the better decision for me for my preferences. Next we have one that I bought a very long time ago, probably about 20 years ago now. It's McCall's 4257. This is definitely early 2000s and it really reminds me of an All Saints shirt that I had. I had the white version and I had the black silk version. I had to sell both of them because they were a size 8 and I could not get them done up anymore. But I really wanted to try and make something similar for myself. I mean, these are not exactly the same. It was called the Katrina shirt and I will try and put an image up for you here. I loved that thing. I used to wear it with either a really wide belt and skinny jeans and knee-high boots, my pirate core thing coming in, or I would wear it with a little waistcoat over the top, leggings and boots. I, I loved it and like I say I had the black silk version as well which was sheer and I used to wear like a decorative bra and the American apparel leather look leggings, high-heeled boots, that and that would be me for a night out. Now, I try to avoid wearing black anymore because it's just not good color on me. Again, I've had my colors done. I'll link that up here if you would like to check out that video. I really want to try making this shirt again. Like I say, it's not exactly the same as the Katrina shirts, but I would like to use this as a base to try and make myself a Katrina shirt from All Saints that fits me now and that I can tweak into my preference. So I am going to keep this one. I, I love this one. <laughs> Next we have McCall's 7985, which is a shirt dress and trousers. I think this is gorgeous and I am keeping this one. I would elongate the front of it and make it into a proper shirt dress. I, I wouldn't mind it keeping it high low hem, but I just don't want it to be the, I, I, I want it to be a dress, not a top because again, I wear dresses far more frequently than I do tops. So I am keeping this one. 
this one is staying. Next we have McCall's 7724, which again is a dupe for the name of the company that I cannot remember. Begins with a P. I re I genuinely paper chase is the only thing that's coming to mind. It's driving me nuts. It's not paper chase. Never mind. I'll put it on screen. So yeah, this is a total dupe for a couple of their shirt patterns that came out. And again, I absolutely love it. I think it's gorgeous. Will I ever wear this? Probably not. Am I going to try and make it? Yes. Am I going to do it in a fabric that they don't recommend? Yes. Oh no, Poplin Cotton Blends Chambray Charmeuse. That's going to be the worst time ever, but it will give a what I think would be the better result because, yeah. And again, it's view B that I particularly like. I do like D. I think D is gorgeous. I am not sure. Mind you, those those shoulders, they look like they're a little higher rather than cut, cutting off there. They look like they kind of cut off here. Again, I would want to turn this into a dress. I would find the waist seam. I would put a waist seam in. Oh, I'd find the waist marking on the pattern, put a waist seam in, and then add a skirt on of some description. I think I would need to mirror some of the ruffles from View B if I was to carry that down. View D could be a much plainer skirt, but I do think a shirt dress with this as the bodice would look really nice, so I'm keeping this one. Next, we have McCall's 7870, and I, again, absolutely love this one. I think it's gorgeous. I'm not going to keep it. It's not got the right kind of details for me to feel comfortable wearing this. I love D and C particularly but that little tie at the front would not work for me with the types of bras that I like to wear and the size of my bust. It just it wouldn't. I do really like the kind of fitted nature of the bodice even though they've really done the model dirty because that's too big for her, way too big for her. I like that fitted Kind of corsety bit that's going on. I just, I don't think this one's for me. This one's going to go. Next we have McCall's 7900, which is very similar to a couple of the other patterns that I've shown you. Again, I like this. I don't think I love this. The neckline's too high for my preference, which is an easy change, but I do have so many patterns out there that, you know, and some ones that are very similar to this that I can use those rather than make the tweaks that this one needs. I like that there are different options of lengths. Again, there is view A, which already has the waist seam in there, so it would be really easy to add a skirt to this. I love the little extra frill doodads on view D. I find that adding a little bit of kind of extra detail here really does help to kind of create the hourglass silhouette that I personally prefer. So I think that's really, really nice. It's a nice top. I just don't think it's enough of a nice top that I would need to, for the, the tweaks that I'd want to make to it to make it work for me that it's not it's not going to stay. It's, that one's going to go. <laughs> Next we have McCall's 8094 which is very similar to the 8177. Very very similar to the 8177. If you don't have the 8177 and you have this pattern you could easily elongate those pattern pieces and end up with a very similar dress. This one does have a different sleeve option B, that ruffle over the sleeve which I actually do quite like but having said that I like like kind of like making this area bigger I'm not sh it really would depend on the fabric that you use for this one it recommends cotton blends charmeuse crepes and poplins so yeah if you use one of the floatier fabrics the the ruffles for B would look really cute I'm not going to keep this one because I do have the 8177 which if I wanted to turn it into a top I could <laughs> but I'm not going to want to do that. Yeah, this is a love. It's the Lola. It's a really, really, really nice pattern. But realistically, looking at it, it's also the bodice of the 8177. So I don't need this one. I have I have something in my my stash that would already give me the same result. Next, we have McCall's 7472. I think this one got culled last year and then snuck its way back in because I love it. Honestly, I'm not going to wear this, am I? I'm really not. I have the Melly Low, which is a... No, that's a drop because this is a raglan sleeve shirt. I do like view A, which is the one that the model with the black trousers, I mean, they're both wearing black trousers, the one without the hat, the model without the hat. I love view A. I would wear it as a cropped shirt though. I would tie it at the front and wear it cropped. But I do like the little tab details that are hold 
I'm gonna keep this one. It survived the curl for the last time. I mean, I did curl it and then it kind of snuck its way back in afterwards, so yeah i'm keeping that one though mccall's 8198 is absolutely gorgeous should be right up my alley it's cropped at the waist it's got a little collar and revere on it the sleeves are nice it's got a tie front detail i like this i do really like this i mean i bought it so clearly i like this one again i have other things in my collection that are going to serve me better than this pattern will i know a few of you have made it up and i love i love how it looks on you but I know if I make this, I'm not gonna wear it. So this one's gonna go. Oh, this one's gonna be difficult. It's 7811. I love how this looks. I really, really like the seaming on this one. It's very similar to the seaming on the Vogue shirt that I showed you earlier. Although that one does have a collar detail and this one does, well, technically this one does have a collar, but it is specifically meant to be worn open the it, it's a shaped neckline so even if you do put the little collar on and the collar stand it has that then you're not meant to like actually button it right at the top that's not what it's designed for and honestly that's how I wear most of my shirts anyway even if they are meant to button right up to the top I never wear them like that I think maybe the 9077 I wear that dress buttoned all the way up to the top I love this one particularly B because of the floof I love I love those those um what are they called mm -hmm. sleeve variations fitted button front tops have sleeve variations capes frills ruffles UB I probably would put the collar on as well this one I probably will turn into a dress <laughs> I'm gonna say that a lot but I I yeah I like this I like this a lot this one's staying this one's staying next we have McCall's 8027 which was part of my pattern swap with Elizabeth. This one is also staying. I love this. I am going to lengthen this into a dress and I am not going to put a waist seam in it. I really like the shaped yoke at the front. I love that it's got a corseting detail along the back which is why I don't want to put any waist seam in. I want to leave it so that I can get the shaping from that. I think it's really really lovely. I might even make this as a shirt as well because it's fitted. It does have shaping in at the waist. It's not just a straight up and down one so this one's staying. Next we have McCall's 8102 and I bought this pattern specifically for the shirt and the shirt only. I'm never gonna make it. Having just fallen in love and, and really wanting to keep that other one with the frills and the ruffles and this one has frills and ruffles on it this one doesn't have as much shaping as that one did this one is a very boxy fit and it's gorgeous and I like the pin tucks down the front but I want that other one I want the shaping that the other one provides rather than this one and again I like cropped shirts but I want to be able to cinch them at the waist I want to be able to tie them in with either like a kind of like little a knot of with with like the long the longer bit tied into a knot or a specific front tie so this one is going to go next Next we have McCall's 7978 and then this is a version of that other one, the velvet one that I'm getting rid of, this one. So this is a more me version of this pattern, the eight, uh, 7870. I really like this one again it's a very deep plunge so I probably would go for the little bow that they've got on the front and end up kind of tying that in a knot to kind of help hide the bra situation that's going on but I really love the shaping in the midriff pieces there is already a waist seam included so it would be really easy to add a skirt onto that so yeah I'm keeping this one and I'm gonna not regret getting rid of this one because I'm keeping this one. And I have two of these in both size bundles. In fact, no, I have two of exactly the same one. How did I end up with two of them? Never mind. One can go in a giveaway, which I will be doing hopefully soon. So next we have 8078, which is an Angela Clayton pattern from the very lovely Heather. This is gorgeous and I love it. It is a shirt waist, so it does have the cutoff at the waist point so it means it's going to be incredibly easy for me to add a skirt to it. I do have the skirt pattern that comes with this. I know for how I like to get dressed that having a shirt that finished there that wasn't affixed to kind of the appropriate because I think this is Edwardian Edwardian? Edwardian? I know that this would come untucked all the time from skirts and I would find that incredibly annoying so I would make this into a shirt dress but I love this and it's, uh, this is staying and again this was in my pattern swap with Heather and I have both size bundles so that one is staying. Next we have the 6710 Butterick pattern from Elizabeth. 
I really like this one, but I do think I have patterns in my stash that are very similar, if not more me. I asked for this one because I really like the neckline of B. I thought it was really interesting. I know I'm never gonna wear it if I make this up. Mum might like this one. I will have to see. She might not because we'll have to see. She might. She might maybe. But yeah, I'm going to put this one in the D stash. But thank you very much to Elizabeth for sending it me when you did because at the time I loved it and was very excited to receive it. Thank you. We have the Butterick 5895. I have made a lot of these. This is one of my ideal shirts. The first two that I made of this I didn't add any length to the pattern because I was like ah oh, crop shirts and oh my goodness they barely covered the bottom of my bra so I've actually added about two and a half inches of length to this one because I want it to sit at my natural waist. I've made a bunch of these and I love it and I will be making a bunch more because it's really 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 useful in my wardrobe because when I make some of my more booby dresses I do tend to end up with a little bit of fabric left over and this is not too fabric hungry. It does also have a centre back seam which helps because the pattern, front pattern pieces can be quite large because of the grown on collar and the grown on sleeve and the grown on tie but I can tend to get this out of the leftovers of five meters of cotton lawn which is my usual amount that I buy for my cotton lawns because I do like to be able to get a top out of it as well and I like wearing the two together. I think it's a really interesting way to kind of make a sundress work hard for you because some of my sundresses are very cleavage-tastic and not everybody wants that and you don't want that all the time so having a shirt that matches that can go over the top is awesome and then obviously these can be worn by themselves as well so it gives me three looks which I like so this one is staying and at some point I'm gonna try the trousers because I think I might like those. Yeah, this pattern's staying, 100%. Next we have Butterick 6562, which I actually have done a sew along for. And um, yeah, this is one of the ones that's gonna go. My battery's dying, two secs. All my batteries are dying. Fingers crossed we can get this done. Yes, 6562. I have done a sew along for this pattern. I, at the time, really liked it. I do think it's a lovely pattern, but it's the same issue. Those cold shoulder details are very restrictive, and I found when I put the shirt on, I just didn't really like the feel of it. I'm genuinely surprised that this is still in my pattern stash after my last cull. I would have thought I would have got rid of it. I think maybe I was thinking, oh, if I use a different fabric, I could maybe make it work, but but this one needs to go. It didn't work for me, but that doesn't mean to say it won't work for somebody else. It's just not the right pattern for the way that I like to wear my clothes. We have New Look 6315, which I think Rachel gave to me. It's a princess seamed shirt with a either a long collar or kind of like little shaping at the front. I think this is really cute. I'm gonna keep this one. Again, this one would be really easy to elongate the panels and have it be a shirt dress. It's kind of giving me Shelby vibes, sort of. I like this one. I'm gonna keep this one. I'm gonna give this one a try. And then we've got New Look 6107, which I think I got with one of the sewing magazines. I really like View A, the shirt. I think that's really, really cute. Am I ever gonna wear it? No, I'm not. And I don't like pencil skirts either, as we have found out this year. I'm gonna see if mum likes this one because she might. I think I need to let that one go. I don't think that one's gonna work for me. Next we have my two Deer and Doe patterns, the Brouillet and the Melilo. I love both of these. I actually have plans for one of these from some Robert Kaufman flannel, which you can just about see there, which I will be making in January next year. I also think that this one is gonna be really easy just to elongate the peplum and turn it into a dress. It would be a very narrow skirted dress for my preferences, but some of my, you know, I, I do have shorter amounts of fabrics sometimes because you know, previous Sean didn't want to pass up on a particular print, but they only had X amount of fabric. So yeah, this one I'm keeping. I have made it up last year. I'm not keeping the shirt that I made from this one. It was a, the Mulberry Cobra Corsage and it's gorgeous, but it's not the right color for me. Mum has the dress and the skirt that I've made from it. And when I do my clear out of my shirts and tops, she's gonna get the shirt as well. This is a really, really fun pattern. I did have to elongate the bodice of this a lot to get it to fit me. Then also the Melly Lo, I absolutely love this pattern. I 
really want to make another one and I want to make one in a white viscose so that it's nice and drapey like the original shirt that I made. Mum also has that original shirt because that print looks way better on her than it does on me. I have kept the Eve dress, lots of people said that I shouldn't have kept the Eve dress from that print but I like it too much and I wanted to keep one piece so mum has the shirt, I have the dress. I will make this again. I will probably end up wearing this as a layering piece in the summer months rather than a cardigan so over like a camisole or a slip vest t-shirt kind of thing knotted at the front that was the preferred way of wearing this one out of all the different ways I tried but I do really like this one so this one's staying as well next we have some now and then patterns a couple of now and then patterns and a couple of Vogue ones left we are nearly done the Clara bow blouse now technically this should be in tops rather than in the shirt section and I'm not sure how it's managed to migrate its way over so when I put it away I'll put it away in the correct place I think this is absolutely beautiful it is gorgeous am I going to wear it probably not as a top but I do think this is one of those ones that I could have a play around with it's a side opening so if I put in a, a waist seam added the skirt that I liked and then the side zip I, li I do like this one this one's staying but it's going to go in the top collection rather than the shirt collection because it's definitely not a shirt this one however is the richmond blouse and again this is absolutely gorgeous it's a raglan sleeve it's got lots of different color options it's another one that i am probably going to want to tweak and make into a shirt dress again personal preference is just the kind of thing that i would wear rather than this one but this is very lovely very lovely indeed and again this one's staying next we have the vogue 1387 which is a rebecca taylor pattern it's a shirt and a top it's in the shirt section because i i would i wouldn't make the top but i do very much like the shirt I think again this is one that mum needs to have a look at I don't think this is one that I need to keep I'm gonna let this one go then we've got Vogue 1659 this is a much more chilled version of that first Vogue shirt that we saw I really really like this one it's a Claire Schaefer pattern so it's going to have some really good instructions in there I really like the detailed instructions that they go into with these ones this was part of my pattern swap with Elizabeth it would also be really easy to elongate this into a shirt dress so I am going to give keep this one I'm going to give this one an attempt at some point in the future and it probably will end up being a shirt dress next we've got Vogue 1769 I bought this one because I think it's a dupe for a Zimmerman shirt that actually has some details around the yoke that front yoke is the reason that I bought this shirt I really like it and I'm gonna keep it I am not at all sure if it would get made up as a shirt or if I would attempt to try and make it into a shirt dress but I really do love that bib detail and I have got some silk organza flowers in my Etsy kind of saved wish list to purchase and to attempt to make something like that Zimmerman shirt at some point in the future so this one's gonna stay I really like it I don't think it would be something that gets worn very often but very much like that Vogue first Vogue pattern I think the challenge of making it up would be really interesting so I want to keep that one and then the last one is Vogue 1728 which again it's awesome it's got all the floofs and ruffles it would be really easy Easy to turn this into a dress as well which I think is something that I would want to do I like that it can be either a sleeveless or a sleeved dress I'm keeping this one this is another one that at some point in the future I'm gonna give it a go I think the front ruffles could be quite interesting challenge to work out how to finish it so that a belt could go the whole way around without smooshing down the ruffles at the front I think there's ways of doing that either by putting in buttonholes for the belt to go through or for actually finishing off the buttonholes or finishing off like a welt in that particular piece for a belt to go through the same size as the waistband on this shirt and I'm only saying that because we all know how I feel about wearing belts I think that could be an interesting challenge it looks like that front piece 
is hemmed it's a single layer and hemmed and i don't overly enjoy that kind of finish on a ruffle that you will see the wrong side of they've picked really good fabrics for both of these e examples because it's the same both sides kind of but for me it probably would end up being made out of a viscose and which means that the back would be really obviously the back so i would probably double those ruffles up that would be interesting in levels of thickness it would be an interesting challenge but i do like this and i can see myself giving this a try in the future so that was an interesting clear out technically i've kept 22 but one of them is going to go in the top pattern collection because it is a top not a shirt so i've kept 21 shirts and i've de-stashed 10 patterns which for me is pretty good i'm i'm kind of pleased with that you'll have to let me know in the comment section down below what you think have i kept runs that i should have gotten rid of have i gotten rid of ones that i should have kept what do you guys think and what do you think of some of my plans for some of the ones that i went in a little bit more depth about and um i know not everybody wants to wear as many dresses as i do but i do love a good dress and it is something that would be more frequently used in my wardrobe than if i left these as just shirts or tops so what do you think of my plans to elongate them and change some of them up so that they would get worn more often let me know what you think in the comments section down below if you've enjoyed this video you might want to check out this one here